Hello and welcome back to Vampire. Um, I don't know if the sound is weird, but it sounds really weird to me. My headphones wouldn't work so I had to plug them into my microphone and now everything sounds really echoey to me. But I did do a text and it didn't sound echoey when I listened to the heck. So it's just going to sound weird for me when I'm talking, which isn't ideal, but <laughs> not much I can do about that. But yeah, my setup's really weird today. I don't know why my headphones wouldn't work normally. Very annoying. Right. <laughs> okay, Jonathan. So, we're going this way. We had to try and sneak, and it's something about pressing F, so I'm wondering if I just have to press F. No, it doesn't work. I'm not sure how we're supposed to sneak. Probably figure it out at some point. Oh, I've got bullets for my gun. That is very exciting. Equip and press to use your range weapons. Be aware of ammunition. Ammunition crate. Good. I may need a lot of bullets. I feel like I'm back on the front line again. Yeah, but I don't know how you even get your gun out. How do we get the gun out? How do we get the gun out? I don't even know how to use it. Alright, I don't know how to use it, but I kind of like uh, just smacking things with this anyway, so it's all fine. <laughs> The blood trail's that way, but I kind of want to see what's up there. Right. Is it just me, or is like the sound of my mouse on the desk really annoying? <laughs> oh, I really have to figure out this, like, how to get my headphones to work normally again. I don't know why they're not, because they weren't fine yesterday. <gasps> oh! Safer place over there! <laughs> I love smacking them up with my <laughs> with my sword. I don't think I really need to use my gun, which is good because I don't know how to use my gun. <laughs> but it's fine because I kind of like smacking things up with my sword anyway. I cannot enter. So the blood trail's down there, we just came up here to, I don't know why, for fun. Came up here for some funsies, now we're gonna get down. All right. I died here last time, didn't I? That was when I died, when I went out there. <laughs> you apparently can't see me. Okay. Oh, there's a few of them out there. I really should use my gun. I just Oh. It was him that killed me last time. He was shooting me when I was yeah. Getting first this time. I wanna drink his blood. I need to do this. Oh fuck. Yeah, yeah, beat him. I actually can't see my health bar because my webcam's in the way. I'm my, I'm my, smart, uh, la, la. <laughs> my setup is absolutely just like fucking bonkers tonight. The sound is weird. I can't see my health bar, so I'm just gonna have to like wing it and just hope I don't die. Right. <laughs> I might have to change it. I'll change it when I have a little pause. Hide. Gee, hide. Don't me hide. There's someone in there, and I think they're probably not very nice, and they're probably going to try and kill me because they are racist against vampires, which is very rude. Oh! Yeah, that's probably a safer way to get out there, isn't it? 
<laughs> That's probably a bit better. I wish I could sneak. I think I can. It mentioned before about like sneaking quietly, but oh, I just don't know. I wonder actually, let me see. Um What would it be in gameplay maybe? Well, this isn't very helpful, is it? <laughs> We're not using a controller. Ah, here we go. Dodge, sprint, walk. Try and shoot someone and see what happens. No, it doesn't work. I'm not shooting anyone when I press that. new tactics. I know that some of our companions consider that the best advantage we have in our fight against leeches is that they don't go out during the day, thus we can hunt them down when they hide, powerless in their sleep. This is a rookie mistake, first because vampires are clever, <laughs> are they? And they have countless ruses and tricks to avoid being spotted in their den. Second, because they deploy many deadly traps to kill any intruders in what they consider their most precious sanctuary. It would cost us too much men and too much time to explore and eradicate vampires in their hideouts. The best tactic is to follow and destroy them when they are really when they really are vulnerable. When they hunt at night it is much easier to attack them then, for they can easily be spotted. That's why the guard of Prewin must evolve and deploy new tactics to hunt leeches. Small and mobile patrols, tactics based on technology logical advantages, modern communications. We can learn many things from the war in France. New strategy, new equipment and new weaponry. Grenades, white phosphorus, ultraviolet light, bulletproof vests and flamethrowers. It is time for the guard to embrace the 20th century. <laughs> from a new war by Geoffrey McCullum. All right. Well, that's not really true because my vampire is not smart at all. He doesn't even know how to equip his gun. No idea. I've got a feeling it's going to be up there. Yeah, I was just going to say it looks kind of weird up there. 
look, rats are often located near hideouts. Using sensors will help you locate them even more easily. I don't want to eat rats. I'm not mice. I don't need to refill my bullets because I can't use them because I don't know how to equip my gun. Alright, let's see if we can do anything here. Can I upgrade? I can upgrade my machete. I think we should do that because it's the weapon that we basically <laughs> always use. Weapon upgrade. You can upgrade your weapon to a new level. Yes! Nice! We upgraded our machete. Okay, we can have enhanced damage. Or enhanced ha handling. I want more damage. That's the only weapon I use, so... <laughs> I would upgrade my gun, but the problem is... I don't know how to use it, so... Okay. So if we go to bed, we my level up, and then I'm gonna adjust all of this crap on my desk so I can play easier. <laughs> um... I've got 530. These are different now. Defensive. You will block your target's blood in their veins, making them defenseless. Or you create an invisible barrier, absorbing direct damage until destroyed. Oh, I quite like the sound of that, actually. Increase the damage when you bite, though, I like that. Increase your health, oh, that might be a good one, actually. So I think I'm going to do my health. Increase your health, yeah. That's what we're going to do. adjust things a little bit so it's less annoying. Okay, I'm gonna make some adjustments quickly. Okay, that's a bit better. I can see uh, my bars now. I can move a bit better. Still a bit echoey, but it's fine. It's because my, yeah, my headset's plugged into my microphone because for some reason it's not working when I plug it into there. So I can like hear my microphone in my ear at the same time as like like talking. It's really weird. <laughs> okay. So we're still following the blood trail. But the thing is the blood trail led here. Oh, the blood trail's going across this bridge. On the map when it said uh, find your creator, it was on a bridge, wasn't it? Oh, it's removed now. Okay. I really need to figure out how to use my gun, man. It says use this button. But when I use this button, nothing happens. So I... I just, um, don't know. I've not used my... I've not used my blood spear yet. That's ranged, isn't it? I can see the blood, I don't need to use my vampire senses. Fresh blood. The whole building reeks of it. Taste. The scent is so strong it makes me dizzy. Always oh, getting thirsty. <laughs> oh, me too, 
Boy, me too. I'm thirsty as fuck as well. I'm going to sneeze in a second, so I apologise for that in advance. Oh, yeah, but that's how it says that I equip my gun as well. I'll press that button. Nothing happens. Nothing happens when I do that. Like, literally, all that happens is I attack. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> this place reeks of bloodshed. Tasty. I can only walk slowly now. Oh my god, William. This can't creature is bedeviled. I must put it down. Oh fuck. You are bedeviled, mate. <laughs> can I suck on him? He's a vampire, isn't he? I probably can't drink his blood. Oh fuck. Heal yourself, boy. Sir, listen to the sound of my voice. I am... I am a doctor. You're suffering from shock. I must return to my flock. They stray without me. Oh my god. <laughs> Remember, certain scowls are every bit as resistant as we are. Oh, Who you're are my you? creator. What do you mean by scowl? You truly are a newborn. I should have realized... Wait. We Watching you are the woman from the bar. Are you like me? Can you help me? I believe so. I already have. She's our creator. There she goes. See? By George and the Saints, you've solved the mystery of these terrible murders. Oh, look. <laughs> Patience, good fellows. I've come to offer help. You're a bit late for that. Give dude. me a moment to secure my boat. We can leave this awful place. William was not the it's evil a man that claimed. He was just taken by the thirst. He needed his drink. This man requires medical attention. We'll see he gets to the nearest hospital. No, I please. I almost tend to my fold. My flock needs me. Yes, sir. Go with the good Dr. Swansea. He's resourceful. And I'm sure he'll take good care of you. You'd best come as well. The sun is soon to rise and you'll need a place to rest. I just need a moment. If I can learn something about what has happened to William, I'll be a step closer to understanding what happened to me. Is he gonna wait for me? Yeah, okay. I've got to go first. This poor creature can't be my maker. Could it be some subspecies of vampire? I must find a place to analyse the blood. Yeah, and what we must also do is figure out how the hell we use our gun. And our two-handed thing, because literally nothing works. And it's very annoying. We can't get up there, it's too far. That woman was like a super vampire or something. Do you know what, though? Why the hell did these, like, savage vampires make this place look so nice with all these candles and stuff? <laughs> they really wanted to set the vibes, didn't they? Alright, I'm ready. Okay, that's what she wants. Across the canal. They'll have a bed for poor Mr. Hampton. 
William was... What manner of creature was he? Predator, prey, villain, and victim. Who can say? The important thing is that he's been stopped. Duly noted. And the woman? What... Who is she? What woman? Oh, don't play me for a fool. You used me to locate that skull. You must know who she is. I and told you a gentleman. You shouldn't talk well. about a lady behind her back. But I will tell you she values her privacy. Were well, London as peaceful as she appears from the middle of the canal? If only that were the reality of the situation. To be honest, I've always tried to avoid this part of the town. Pembroke Hospital is the last bastion between the rest of London and the epidemic. The flu has decimated the East End and the war still rages. Welcome to the front lines of a plague. This is where you work, Dr. Swansea. Oh. I reckon I crashed. Okay, so we didn't get put too far back. Thank God. <laughs> this is where you work, Dr. Swansea. I am the administrator of Pembroke Hospital. I thought you were here in service of your mysterious order, the Brotherhood of... Of St. Paul's Stone, yes. But first and foremost, I'm a man of science. A physician, like yourself, Dr. Reed. How, how do you know who I am? No need for modesty. You are Dr. Jonathan Reed, a surgeon of some caliber and renown, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct, sir. I knew it. I had my suspicions. <laughs> but when you took the blood sample from the corpse of... Poor William, I was sad. Dr. Reed, marvellous. Yeah, he, know, he likes me. <laughs> I attended three of your seminars before the war. I have the utmost admiration for your research. And what a turn of fate. England's most esteemed blood specialist returns to London a vampire. <laughs> God, he finds it funny. Word again. From a so-called man of science. I understand. Traditionally, the role of science is to refute myth, but when myth walks among us, the Brotherhood of St. Paul has dedicated its purpose to their study. There's so much for you to learn. And for that, you are right. Well, then let me be blunt. Join my staff at Pembroke Hospital. As a physician. I suspect you'll not find a better post of employment to contemplate your predicament. Predict? This is sudden. I, I was returning idea. home to see my sickly mother. But alas, that was before contracting this affliction. He murdered his own Dr. sister Reed. and he wants him to work in a hospital. Take a moment to consider. The post would be for the night shift, providing a good explanation for your absence during daylight hours. Yeah, but they only have to look at me and they can tell that I'm a vampire. I look have like a place freak. to hide. I even had the forethought to bring some clean clothes. Thank you. So, what do you say? I need some clean clothes. It seems I have little choice, but yours is a generous offer, so I thank you. Brilliant. Oh, Jonathan, this is one for the book. And the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I still don't really trust him much. Am I going to change into some clean clothes now? That's why I can make all of those, like, um, medicines and stuff in my hovels. <laughs> Dr. Swansea, thank goodness! I was beginning to be concerned. Worry no more, Nurse Crane, for I bring good news. Oh, Doctor, what a night. We lost two more patients. Nurse Scow said she couldn't take it anymore and resigned. Yes, well, I'll make a new rotor in the morning. In the meantime, I'll find a... Oh, good bed for Mr. Hampton. Be sure to pay attention to his needs. Of course, Doctor. Oh, and Dorothy? Yes, Doctor? Dr. Reed here has just returned from the front. He served King and Country and will be joining us here at Pembroke. We're very lucky to have gained a surgeon of his talent, and one so experienced in blood transfusions. That is good news indeed, Doctor. <laughs> oh, yes. 
Uh, here at Pembroke, it's not what we have, but what we haven't. It's only thanks to Nurse Crane and the staff that our ship doesn't sink. If you have any questions, just ask her. Duly noted. Thank you. Your assistance is required, Dr. Swansea, immediately. Aboard, Jonathan. We'll catch up after my round. I'm coming, Nurse Crane. I'm coming. So, I'm working in the hospital now, which is like the most stupid shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. I've accepted Dr. Swansea's help. I will work at the Pembroke Hospital. I have no choice. The man knows about my condition, about what I have become, a vampire. I can't believe this. I don't know anything about this secluded medical facility. Excuse me. <laughs> Everybody here will take me for what I'm not anymore. Jonathan E. Reed, the famous surgeon. I must lie to them all, to the patients, to the staff. This is my new home. Where will I hide from all who are after me? Where will I hide from everyone until I get better understanding of what's going on? Identify and confront the vampire who created me. It says I succeeded, but I didn't, because I didn't really speak to her, did I? Alright, I've got to enter the hospital then. Come on, you bastard! You can do better than that! Who's talking? Oh, look, there's like chests in there. We need to get in there. Nah, it's not her. I think we should, uh. much blood. Calm yourself. You think I didn't notice? Stop your staring and get me to an hospital, you arse! Insult me again and I'll put an end to your misery right now. <laughs> all right, all right, sorry. I have been paying me. We got to spin it out onto the street and you're jabbering on. Yes, that's a very nasty word. Take my word, I was... I am a doctor, Dr. Jonathan Reed. Name's Clay Cox. I'd appreciate you helping me to a better place, Doc. Follow me, Mr. Cox. Let me assist you to that better place. But blood quality indicates how much XP you'll gain. The higher the blood quality, the more XP you get. Drink the blood of your prey, you first need to mesmerize them. To leave them out of sight from others, your mesmerize level must be equal or higher to the citizen's resistance. Press Q to mesmerize completely. Bring this fading light. Follow the red trail to lead your prey into the shadow. The dance of life and death. Oh my god, I love this so much. To embrace. In the back, you bastard! Didn't have the guts to fart me. You. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. The district will soon suffer the consequences of your action. What's that mean? <laughs> Did I do something bad? I was only having some lunch. Alright.
think he's happy about eating that man. I want to get in here because there are chests in there, but... It's locked, all right. Yeah, it's annoying. Do you think that man had a pee? Finally, not telling us to uh, join the war. Influenza, frequently complicated with pneumonia. To prevent any cases, Spanish flu, stay at home. God, this is like you're giving COVID vibes. <laughs> Anything fun over here? No. Is this the hospital as well? I think one of those might be the hospital. So I come over to this man, is he gonna try and kill me? Die, yeah, he is! <laughs> Tasty! Yum, yum, yum. I just realised he's level 10, so I should probably go home in a minute. Let's go to the hospital, I think he was a bit high level. <gasps> Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. Why did I... Why did I even do that? What on earth is that all about? Right. <laughs> it's healthy, but I guess I could fuck it up a little bit by eating that man. Because he was kind of an innocent dude and I just fucking chomped in him. <laughs> Although he was kind of rude, to be honest. I'm not going to make waste, doctor. I'm, I'm just stealing the patient's things. Yeah. I'm trying to loot these dying people. <laughs> all right. Come on, I don't have all night. You look almost as bad as I did earlier. Do you know that's what the nerves over there? Due to influenza, this hospital can no longer take any patients. Hospital 4, please go home. Doctor, where have you been? I've little time to play hide and seek with new staff members, no matter how illustrious they may be. I apologize, nurse. I needed some time to myself. This has been the longest and strangest night of my life. You delivered poor Mr. Hampton from a terrible fate. The means to that end should be of little concern, Doctor. Thank you, nurse. I really recognize her voice. Dr. Swansea insisted we provide you a quiet office. You'll find it on the second floor with your name on the door. Thank you. Where do I know her voice from? Isn't it? Yes, Dorothy Crane. Welcome to Pembroke Hospital, Dr. Reed. Your office has been prepared. I would like to ask a few questions first. Who is Dr. Swansea? What kind of man is Dr. Swansea? Well, you accepted the job from him. I thought you would have known about your employer. When you've met him. Apologies, I've only just met him the once. This is sudden. I've only just returned to England. She's Dr. Dead Swansea inside, is a brilliant she? surgeon and the most compassionate physician. He knows me more than I know him, that's kind of true. It's right to assume Dr. Swansea knows far more about me than I do about him. You'll get to know him soon enough, and better than me. The administrator has better things to do than mix with us. How is Mr. Hampton? And Mr. Hampton, the patient we brought in. 
How does he fare? I gave him a sedative to help him sleep. Poor thing was in quite a state of shock. Where's my room? If you could point me in the direction of my room again, nurse. Second floor of the hospital, left after the stairs. It's the last vacant office at the end of the corridor. I've already forgotten that, but thanks. Thank you, that's <laughs> great. Second floor, left, end of corridor. There's not much to loot in this game, is there? Oh. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm new here. I've already heard about you, Dr. Reed. I'm Milton Hooks, the ambulance driver for this shithole of a hospital. That's quite a blunt introduction, <laughs> Mr. Hooks. You can call me Milton. I like to speak my mind, Dr. Reed. Perk of the job. Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Well, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure a gun can't be used as a surgical instrument. You have a keen eye. I learned to shoot during the war, and have carried one ever since. Old habits die hard. No need to explain, Dr. Reed. And if you ever need a better gun, remember, I may have something for you. The ambulance driver is going to give me a gun, is what you're telling me. <laughs> So what do you do exactly in this hospital? Apart from smuggling guns, I mean. <laughs> I've been an ambulance driver since... too long, I guess. I bring sick people here night and day. It's a dirty job, but I get it done. Most of the time. What does that mean? Most of the time? <laughs> it sounds like things have been a bit rough recently. What's happened? Yesterday I got attacked by the patient I was bringing in. I escaped through the hospital's garden, but I lost my wallet when I was running. You left an infected patient outside the hospital. That's incredibly dangerous. Go there yourself if you <laughs> want, but be careful, Doctor. I'd rather not bring your dead body back. Midnight in the garden would get a new, new investigation. A new citizen investigation is available. Citizen investigations are displayed here. You can start a new citizen quest by tracking it. It's already we're already tracking it. Okay. How is the sanitary situation? Since you're on the front line, how is the sanitary situation in this vicinity? It's a complete disaster. It's even getting dangerous to enter some streets or buildings. Even the locals attack you. Well, this sounds fun. <laughs> smuggling weapons? Are you really smuggling weapons through the hospital? And why not? I've already been attacked by patients, you know. And by gang members willing to steal my money. But you're not defending yourself. You're selling guns to civilians. You keep people alive your own way, Doctor. I offer them another way to protect their health. Okay, how's the situation around here? How is the situation around here? You want to hear the situation is all right? It's fucking awful. We lack <laughs> I everything. love this dude. And it's getting worse every day. All right, Milton Hooks is my favorite character. Hint <laughs> All right, so there's things I can't ask him in Get I'd like to see your good. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. I like how we were like berating him for like <laughs> for um the smuggling guns and then we're like, we'll buy one. We can't afford any of this shit. We can't even use a gun anyway, so what's the point? I do need to figure out how to do that, but I might look it up I should have considered the when I have another little it. break because I'm going to have to make some coffee soon. So I'll read it while I'm making coffee I'm about how to use, actually use the gun. <laughs> I hate searching things up because I'm worried I'm going to get spoiled. But, um, 
I'm sure searching how to equip a gun is not going to spoil anything. Okie doke. I think we've seen everything there is to see out here now. We've spoken to everyone, we've spoken to our best boy Milton and the nurse. I don't see anyone else to talk to. Dr. Swansea is right. This place seems perfect to conduct my research. Does it? How would you know that from just walking in the door? There's a patient there. She... Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. Oh. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Describe how you feel. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. Is she a vampire or is she losing it? I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome, Miss Howard? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. Well, <laughs> I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howard? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whatever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me, for I am a vampire. I see. <laughs> Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. Yeah, she's probably right. <laughs> Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. That was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see. I wonder if she actually is. I don't think she is. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. She does kind of look like a vampire, to be honest. Well, so do I, look at me. Nobody seems to notice. They don't seem to kiss all the time. <laughs> I do not look well. Alright, I'm gonna have a look around down here before I find my room. This looks like a horrible, horrible place, and I don't really understand why he thinks it's perfect. Also, they're like, this place is full, but it's not full, there's loads of empty beds. Oh, 
to you again. We've already spoken. We don't need to talk again right now. Maybe we'll talk later. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Fiddick. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed. So I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter, and a good one too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Aykroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is I disagree about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Yeah, I'll probably end up eating you by accident, boy. <laughs> we don't have any hints. How do we get hints? I guess we get them from like for now, other people. I'll see you later. talk to the doctors that are arguing about him. What can I do for you, Doctor? God, where do I know your voice from? Thank you, Nurse Crane. Hi. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. That's kind of a cool name, isn't it? Mortimer Goswick. I quite think that's a really cool name. I like your name, Mortimer. God, you need lots of hints to talk to old Mortimer here. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. Well, we can't tell you what's I'm wrong sure you, you talk. realize a doctor and his patient have to communicate, sir. Would it help if I gave you some paper and a pen? Not really. I see. Then maybe it's not just your throat that hurts, Mr. Goswick. Perhaps your sore throat is just the consequence of something more hurtful. Yes, maybe. But I don't want to talk or even write about it now. Oh, maybe I can still ask that, so I guess, um... Tell me about yourself, Mr. Cosby. I don't need to talk, Doctor. I'm going to have to try and get into talk. Sorry. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Doctor. Good evening, madam. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. Well, she won't. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Gosman? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. Are you that rich? <laughs> Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes. Thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. 
I can cover any needed medical expenses. May I ask if you have an occupation? What are you doing in your life? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. Okay. What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we I have can't no say I blame choice, you. <laughs> considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. All right. <laughs> Bitch with questions at Pembroke Hospital's efficiency. I can see their blood quality. Tells me how to cure. Cure with treatment for fatigue. And then their blood quality would be better and then I can eat them. <laughs> Alright. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What Did I just like such a bad first impression? Death. The ambulance driver was quite rude for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. That nurse is after people's dash. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Now you're speaking to her, maybe has someone talk to me. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Why did your mother have you hospitalized here? She seems convinced this is a bad hospital. My mother just wants the best for me. She won't rest while I'm here. She'd go all the way to hell and back to help me. Is your mother bothering you? Is your mother bothering you? As your doctor, I can ask her to leave you alone if you would prefer. That's tempting, Doctor. But you have no idea what my mother is capable of. She would tie herself to my bed if you asked her to leave. That's kind of weird and creepy. <laughs> Pembroke Hospital may look unorthodox, but rest assured, you're in good hands here. It's not me you have to convince, Dr. Reed. It's my mother. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. I can make some Doctor. medicine for him, maybe, if I get to my room. You down, my boy. letter Pembroke Hospital 2nd of November my dear children sorry I did not write to you before but it hurts like hell to write these few words on bloody paper <laughs> don't worry daddy will go out of the hospital as soon as the doctors fix his arm in the meantime if you need something go see Mr Chadwick at the construction site and tell him you are Harvey Fiddick's children you remember Robert Chadwick the big guy with the moustache he helped me repair the house doors last spring. Go and see him and ask for a few bob. He won't refuse to spare you a few. I'm sorry, I can't work anymore for now, but we'll figure something out as soon as I'm out. Don't worry, everything will be fine as soon as Daddy's arm is strong again. As soon as the doctor fixes my arm, I dot dot dot. <laughs> okay, we can ask him about that. As for me, 
Good evening, Mr. Philip. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? No. You seem worried about the safety of your family. And it's obviously the so reason aggressive. why your wound troubles you so much. I cannot give up on my children now. They both need me living. What about their mother, if I may ask? She died in 1915 during one of the first Zeppelin raids. We never found her body. That's kind of sad. Um, I like how aggressive I sound though when I'm like doing these. Tell me more about the death of your wife, <laughs> Harvey. 1915. I was in the army. Building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that my kids have. Poor little bleeders. How are your children after losing their mother? They were smaller then. The only good thing about this is my Ellen didn't bring them with her that night. Bye for now, Mr. Philip. I'll see you later. We need to get him, like, operated on. I'm going to go make some coffee before I speak to him. There's so many people to talk to. Oh my god, why have they closed it all? need the words to calm the children, Ellen. As for me, what a blundering idiot. Why did they close that door? That's really weird. But okay. Alright. I will uh, go make some coffee and then we will continue. <laughs> I'm back. Oh my god, my blood is low. I'm going to talk to these doctors. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, <laughs> Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Okay, your life in London. We already know he's got a problem with us. <laughs> if you have a problem with me, Dr. Aykroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Mr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. Having a dog problem. No need for such animosity. Jealousy will not do you any good. Aren't you too old for such jealousy? <laughs> it really won't do you any good, you know. Don't be ridiculous, <laughs> Dr. Reed. A simple glance is enough for me to know you have nothing for me to envy. It's really fucking rude. About the Pembroke. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, Perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I any good practitioner should express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Okay. I have proved my value. I don't know what you've heard about 
that I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, yeah. Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money, fame, or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. The subtitles don't always line up with what they're actually saying. <laughs> Knowledge on me, but I know you justify my actions to you. I don't see any reason why I should justify my actions to you. That's true, Dr. Reed. The only judge has to be yourself. The question is, are you judging yourself hard enough? He doesn't even know me. He's just like being really judgmental. <laughs> bad memories of your military service. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something. Alright, then I'll we'll <laughs> talk later. <laughs> well, he is a twat. Hopefully this other doctor is nicer. Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. Okay, well he's like the opposite. He's like a suck. And you are. <laughs> I am Thoreau Strickland. Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. I can, like, mind read him. What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. <laughs> Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the imp influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Aykroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy and pride? Dr. Aykroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. Yeah, and he's also an old soul, but you know. <laughs> tell me about yourself. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. Tell me about your experiments. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me, but I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. What made you choose that career? What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. Flattery, is it? It's always a He's pleasure nice to share scientific scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. Okay. Tell me about the hospital. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. With your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. Do you need my help? Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. You seem quite optimistic. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm 
convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve this situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed, especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father, ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior, a man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes, and fears, not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones, and flesh. Okay. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I think then, what do we have to do? I will not let you down. That door's open again. I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Can we help him? We've spoken to the doctors. Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. We unlocked something. Any news about my operation? We unlocked something. Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. We know how his wife died. How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. Did you? Did you volunteer to bring him there's a lot of mistakes when it comes to the subtitles and grammar in this game. <laughs> you can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick, unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself, but I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. Bye. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. Can we talk as for me? Can we talk to the asshole again and be like, you're a dick? <laughs> I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Your thoughts on Strickland's weed. Tell me, Waverly. What do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, That's sir, exactly what he said about you. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Is your rivalry blinding you? And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough let my personal feelings affect my judgment. Why do you wish to leave this surgery? Why do you wish to leave this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. It's a conservative point of view. To be honest, I don't really know, understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I know, I just want to trust you. You will assume the consequences. 
I don't know if that's positive or negative. It's a conservative point of view. Again, is he saying that as a positive or a negative? I'm a bit confused, but I don't trust his judgment, so I'm just going to pick one of these. If you are going to lead this surgery, I'm trusting you to assume the consequences of your actions, whatever the result. I'm not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, Dr. Reed. There is no need for you to be looking over my shoulder. Okay. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Um, so... It's kind of, uh, confusing. I don't really understand. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go and find my room and then I can come back and talk to these later because I've been playing for ages and so I feel like I need to find my room and go to sleep and level up and then end, end the video there because I've been going on for ages. I just have to find the way up the stairs. Freak me out there, that's a mirror. I do have a reflection as a vampire. I don't know when they say the second floor, do they mean second floor in British English? There will be one more up because they're using a lot of American words considering this is set in English. So I'm thinking maybe it means the first floor is the second floor. But maybe not. Maybe it actually is what I would assume would be the second floor. I don't know. Relegated to the shadows, a kingdom of my own. At least I won't be sleeping in a coffin. Ha ha ha! Right. <laughs> Let's have a little look around our room. We've got like examination tables and shit in here. Article on Econs. It's a rare opportunity and almost a privilege to approach a vampire to observe their most intriguing physical and psychological traits with a scientific and rational eye. Here are some of the most fascinating abilities I've personally observed over the last 10 years while interviewing a few vampires, or econ as they prefer to call themselves. Supernatural speed, a vampire can act and move like a mortal in all his actions, but the trained eye will spot that he had the, he'll have the keenest senses and can react quicker than any mortal. On a few occasions, alarm, surprise, necessity to flee. I have seen a vampire move so quickly it's almost as if he has vanished just to reappear somewhere else. The human eye cannot follow their movements when they act so quickly, but it is not a teleport or a dematerialization. It is only a supernatural speed. For me, it is a cat-like attribute which allows them to run, dodge or jump longer and faster than us. I also notice that such speed seems to exhaust them and that they are bound to physical limitations. Mesmerism. One of the most powerful abilities a vampire can deploy is the capacity to force a mortal to obey them. I call this trait mesmerism, but it has nothing to do with the mortal ability to alter a subject's mental state. A vampire can bend a mortal to their will, and they even can even break a mind. A vampire I interviewed even told me the more a subject tries to resist, the more permanent the damage will be, as if the vampire could literally fracture the target's psyche. The same vampire explained to me that this ability required time to master and that the result could vary widely from one subject to another. Implant a false memory, erase a painful one. The possibilities are endless and frightening. 
blood awareness. This may be the most catastrophic ability of all concerning vampires, since it is the cause of so many tragedies for them and us. Vampires crave for blood. They must use their will to restrain themselves from frenzied drinking every drop of blood they can see. They need blood to function and to express their full supernatural traits. A famished vampire can be very weak. Even if he cannot die of hunger or thirst, this urge, this urge, this need for blood may explain why a vampire is so aroused by it. A vampire confessed to me that blood could sometimes blind him, since its smell and attractiveness can be so strong. When he focuses, a vampire can almost see blood all around them, inside warm bodies, through walls, on a supposedly clean weapon, etc. The same vampire even told me that he can see if a mortal has clean blood or is ill, and that in some cases he can even sense diseases and infected clothes, or even items in a room. If this is true, it could have so many... It did it that again. <laughs> you know, if this is true, it could have so many medical applications, it's almost beggar's belief. So that's supposed to be almost beg's belief. Beggar's belief. Very weird. This game is very weird. <laughs> okay, let's continue looking around our room. There was something over here. Oh yeah, I need to figure out how to use my gun. I'll do that before the next episode. I'll look it up. We don't really need to refill anything because we don't use anything. <laughs> Sounds really bad, but it's true, we don't. There's a Y on here, like... Oh, we've got to analyse his blood. I will do that um, next time as well, actually. I will do that next time too. We will just go to bed and level up. And then we will do that other stuff. We'll do that other stuff next time when he wakes up. Okay. <laughs> Um, we've got a lot, look how much XP points we've got. We can increase our health again. Increase blood capacity. Increase blood absorption. Blood capacity, that could be good. Because we lower quite a lot, aren't we? We will do twice, actually. Um, could we do with more stamina? I would quite like more that damage with biting because it sucks at the moment. <laughs> I might actually put two in there. Yeah, okay, we've leveled up biting and blood. <laughs> what are these tactical things? Shadow Veil. Drain your stamina to fade into the shadows and become invisible to enemies. Oh my god, we should have got that. We should have got that. We'll get that next time. Okay. We will definitely get that next time. Because I think that is kind of cool. Oh yeah, we killed him, didn't we? Why has it got an X on it though? Does that just mean he's dead? Clay Cox, no relationships. Does that mean we could have been in front of him? 30 year old male, low life with no consideration for other human beings, perhaps his wife Edwina. He was the leader of a gang. All right, I don't need to read anything else. He's a selfish asshole basically. So actually it was fine that he we killed him. <laughs> So, um, that's going to be it for now, and uh, next time we will analyse the blood, we will go into the courtyard and find whoever this is, and talk to a few more people and explore the hospital a bit more. Um, and while I'm gone, before I play next time, I will make sure that I learn how to shoot my gun. <laughs> because right now it's just very confusing and I have no idea how to do it. So yeah, 
Uh, it wasn't as exciting this episode, it was a lot of uh, talking to people and reading stuff, but it was still fun, it was very interesting. I'm looking forward to getting out there and doing some more sort of action-y things next time. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you